Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled Planet X made visible by CMEs in stereo images. Now, Planet X objects or stellar cores have been observed moving away from the Sun within CME plasma, and CME stands for coronal mass ejection, for quite some time. And one such object was observed during a CME event on July 23rd, 2017. And this is what is shown. This is the object that's shown here within the CME material. And it was observed to be moving away from the Sun. Now, these objects are what I call uh, stellar cores because they are solid objects that um, retain their three-dimensional shape and therefore um, have to be very dense in order not to be vaporized in the environment of the sun's corona which is at a temperature of millions of degrees Kelvin and the fact that these objects move away from the sun within the CME shows that the gravitational interaction cannot be um, the interaction that occurs between these objects and the Sun. And this is described in my article 67, Stellar Core Gravitation and Errors. Now another planet X object has um, once again appeared in the Sun's corona and has been observed to be moving away within CME material. And this particular object, which we see here, was observed on November 30th, 2017. And you can see that the object uh, seemed bright. It was certainly spherical. And it appeared to have some other objects uh, attached to it. And this is one of the particular characteristics that these objects seem to have. And that is that they connect to each other and as well as to the sun. So they seem to cluster. And this object seemed to be about half the size of the Sun. If we compare it, this uh, white circle gives us the size of the Sun. And this object, well, it appears we would be able to fit two of these along uh, the Sun's uh, diameter. So it's about half the size of the Sun, which would make it about five times the size of Jupiter. And uh, as I mentioned before, there appears to be other objects, the one, two, and three, that seem to be connected to it. There may be more. These larger ones usually have uh, uh, some smaller ones attached to them. Now here's another image. This one is in this false color, which makes the object even more noticeable. It's obviously emitting some light, otherwise it would appear to be dark w uh, within the Sun's corona. Now these objects um, have been known to cluster and these images uh, show these objects clustering around the central one as you can see. This is a close-up of this image here and we see some dark uh, stellar cores uh, congregated or clustering around a lighter one. The lighter one would be more uh, rejuvenated because it now emits more light. We can see the same sort of thing here, some darker stellar cores uh, seemingly congregated around one that seems to be emitting more light, at least from uh, its central portion or its core. So this illustrates the type of clustering that we seem to see in these uh, images. These are stereo A EUVI, so ultraviolet light uh, images in 195 angstrom. So an object that appears bright like this would be emitting quite a lot of ultraviolet light. And the black ones uh, would not. These appear to be the cores of these objects, and they seem to be surrounded by an envelope, which um, is called the ionizing envelope. So you see the type of clustering that seems to happen. Uh, these objects seem to uh, therefore connect along the equator, and to appear to have this black 
um, well, this hole in the toroidal shaped envelope. Uh, through which the core can be seen. And the brighter ones are more rejuvenated, have started emitting light from the core, and that eventually becomes brighter than the light they emit from the ionizing envelope, this toroidal shaped uh, um, envelope that's made out of ionizing material. And it's not actually gas. Um, some of the stellar cores have shown that this material is actually in the solid phase. Now these um, stellar cores are actually old stars that have aged and gone through the red giant and white dwarf phases. And so they have lost most of the outer layers of ionizing material to the point that the star's core is exposed. And they are attracted to the sun, they make magnetic connections with the sun, and with it, and uh, they absorb plasma from the sun. They also absorb energy from the sun and thus increase the electric potential energy. And thus they go through a rejuvenation process in the sun's corona, which allows them to eventually be able to emit visible light. And this process is described in my article 100, Planet X Objects, the Rejuvenation Process. So these stellar cores that observe to be moving away from the sun within CME material suggest that they are actually provoking the sun into CME events. And of course this is to be expected as these objects make these magnetic connections with the sun and through them they pull plasma from the sun and away from the sun's surface towards their own surfaces. And this happens as the sun is approached by one of these objects. The sun's magnetic field is pulled away from the sun's surface. It opens up, but it must make a, a loop, a complete loop. So it closes at the stellar core itself. So the stellar core pulls the sun's magnetic field towards itself. And thus uh, plasma from the sun spirals along these magnetic field lines towards the stellar core. And the stellar core's uh, plasma spirals along the magnetic field lines towards the sun, along the returning field lines. Thus there's actually this exchange of plasma. The stellar core absorbs plasma from the sun, and the sun um, ends up with plasma from the stellar core, which accumulates in the sun. And this, this plasma uh, from the stellar core, especially the older ones, uh, would not be um, very energetic and cannot really be used to emit light. That's why um, they start emitting light once they absorb enough of uh, plasma from the sun. They also need to absorb energy in order to ionize that plasma. So this is the magnetic connection they make uh, with the sun. Now in addition, the large number of stellar cores that have invaded the sun's corona are, of course, drawing energy from the sun and plasma. And this is weakening the sun. And a weaker star will be likely to have greater difficulty holding on to its surface plasma. And this is, in fact, why stars uh, enter the red giant phase. Um, a when a star gets to a certain point, uh, it starts aging. That is its electric potential energy, which it uses to power its ability to emit light, which is to ionize its outer layers and also to create nuclear reactions. Um, so it's powered by this electrical potential energy. And once the star starts aging, this energy drops, and with it the star's um, magnetic field, because it too is um, powered by the amount of energy that the star can have. So as the star's magnetic field starts to drop, uh, 
it's no longer able to hold on to its surface plasma as well because it's through the magnetic field that stars hold on to their plasma. It's what contracts plasma towards the center of the star. So it's contained by the magnetic field. Once that starts dropping, the star loses its ability to hold on to surface plasma and so it would expand. So in the same way as these objects weaken, absorb energy and plasma from the sun, they are weak the sun so its magnetic field will start to decrease and therefore its ability to hold on to surface plasma so it will be easier and easier for these objects uh, we see another one of these here to uh, provoke the sun into having CME events where um, it's some of its surface plasma explodes outwards now here we see another one of these objects. This one um, was uh, observed on November 25th and it, it was quite large as you can see if we compare its size with the, sun, the size of the sun here. It appears to be even larger. And this one appears to have a dark circle in the center and a brighter uh, ring around it. And this is the characteristic of the young stellar cores which have uh, ionizing envelopes retained from the white dwarf phase. So these are younger y um, stellar cores that have not aged much beyond the white dwarf phase. So they still retain these um, envelopes, these ionizing envelopes of material that they would be able to still ionize to produce light. So they don't shed them. Whilst the older ones that come to the sun with much smaller envelopes um, seem to shed their ionizing envelope and absorb a new plasma from the sun. So we see an image of the same object here again. You can see the, the dark core and the bright uh, ionizing envelope. And so this object seems to have gone through quite a bit of rejuvenation. These objects start emitting light from the ionizing envelope first and then eventually start emitting light from the core. And this one, the core does not seem to be completely black, so it must have started emitting some light from the core. And this ionizing envelope that these objects have is toroidal in shape, and that's due to the symmetry of the magnetic field. Um, and here we see uh, an example of each of them. This is one of the oldest stellar cores, very little ionizing material left on it. When it was initially observed, uh, the ionizing material was in the form of stripes. Again, that's due to the symmetry of the magnetic field. But it shared it, so eventually it was photographed with very little ionizing material left on its surface. And this is the other type, which has the envelope, which is to in shape and we can see here it looks like a, a fat disc and these ones do not seem to shed their whole envelope uh, but they still make uh, connections with the Sun so they may still absorb some of the plasma from the Sun may have um, some exchanges with the Sun as well. This one seems to be having a, a connection with this particular stellar core here. Um, but they do not seem to share their whole envelope to the point that the whole core that we see here of uh, the star is visible. And here we have a diagram that illustrates the reju rejuvenation process that these younger stellar cores seem to go through. So when they come into the solar system, they do not emit visible light. They just emit um, infrared light, so they would look dark. The whole of the object will look dark. Then soon uh, after being in the sun's corona for a while, they start emitting light from the ionizing envelope. And then eventually they start emitting light from the 
core. So they basically reversed the process they went through from uh, the beginning of the white dwarf phase when they were very bright and then cooled down and gradually became darker. They reversed that and moved towards uh, becoming a bright object once again. I don't think they ever become as bright as um, they were at the beginning of their white dwarf phase, but they may be able to become reasonably bright with the energy that they are able to absorb from the sun. So um, in conclusion, two uh, stellar cores were observed moving away from the sun with CME plasma in stereo A core 2 images at the end of November. It was not clear what type of stellar core the one observed on November 30th was. Um, it may have been uh, one of the younger ones or one of the older ones. That was not clear. But um, it obviously had rejuvenated to the point that it could emit light once again because it didn't look like a, dark, a black object in the sun's corona. Um, then the one observed on November 25th appeared to be uh, the younger type of stellar core and which is closer to the white dwarf phase and does not shed its ionizing envelope. And this object appeared to have rejuvenated enough to have a bright light emitting ionizing envelope and to have started emitting light from the core, as the core did not seem to be completely black. Now, the presence of these objects within CME plasma provides further evidence to the fact that they seem to provoke the sun into having CME events. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.